yeah, well, I mean, it seems like we all agree that life is a game, so there's not going to be any screaming back and forth, I guess. Um, it, I but mean, what do we mean by game? Yes. What do we mean by game? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think what I said earlier was there are many games that we can be playing, and I think the most important games are the ones where we're kind of in competition with ourselves, uh, vying for things that aren't necessarily shared with other people or that other people are competing for. Um, I don't see any reason why, for instance, every person couldn't reach some baseline proficiency in mental health and physical health and strength and even level of educational attainment. It doesn't even have to be formal college um, in the pursuit of some hobby or passion. Like these are all types of games that people can play that can enrich their lives in a plethora of ways. I think that the issue that we run into, especially in the Western world, is a lot of the games that we're looking to play are in competition with other people. Um, there's a saying that, um, is it jealousy is the thief of joy? Or like, wow. the, like the idea that basically you can have something, you can be uh, nice and feel good about it, but then as you see that your neighbor has something bigger or better, now all of a sudden you don't feel good about the thing you have. You know, you have the iPhone 12, he's got the iPhone 13. Uh, you have the uh, Mustang, he's got the Bugatti, that all of a sudden the things that you have are no longer good anymore. Um, I think that the, the games, as I said earlier, the games that we play seem to be increasingly more consumeristic and a consumer game is often measured by the, the actual value dollar amount of the things that you're acquiring. And in that sense, it's very easy to compare from A to B. Is my house worth more than his house? Is my car worth more than his house? Am I in the top 10%, 5% or 1% of earners? I think that if you're stuck on playing these games where you're in relentless competition with other people, then necessarily you're gonna have winners and losers. And necessarily there's gonna be a big chunk of losers that are gonna feel like losers. And it's gonna inhibit even their ability to navigate life and play the individual games that I think they should be more focused on. So I don't think games necessarily have to create inequality. Um, there's only gonna be so many winners in a given video game tournament or in a given tennis tournament or in a given NFL or NBA league. Um, but I don't see any reason why we you know, can't all win at, for instance, not being homeless or for instance, having a person that loves you or having a good relationship with our friends and family. Yes, but uh, first, a very brief theoretical point. I agree with some of my friends, not fully, but like uh, uh, Varoufakis, uh, 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 Jody Dean and so on, who claim that what is happening today is that uh, liberal competitive capitalism is already approaching the end. I think it is meaningful to say, although the term is maybe too radical, it's not as simple as that, that we are entering the era with new feudal masters. This ultra rich corporations or owned by individuals. How did Bill Gates become so rich? He monopolized our commons. If we want to communicate, we have to go through his products. So it's not profit in the sense of exploiting his workers. It's rent. We are paying him rent. We are paying Jeff Bezos rent and so on and so on. So this is a new phase, but let me go to the basic point about games. I also agree with both of you who got it correctly that uh, uh, there is no spontaneous tendency towards equality, inequality in, uh, in uh, games, but they are contradictory. In what sense? First, uh, there is for me a strange psychological fact that uh, often you cannot say something in reality, but if it's put in the terms of a game, even theater play, you can do it. For example, the great classic Jane Austen's Mansfield Park. A young couple is in love. They are too constrained to say this openly. But they select a Shakespeare piece, I think, where they, in the game, but uh, they, they can say it. So this is what Jacques Lacan meant, I think, when he says this, that uh, the, the truth has the structure of a fiction. And I deeply believe that, in this sense, masks are never just masks. When we adopt a mask to play a game, we can bring out there something that we are not ready to confront in our so-called uh, uh, so uh, real life. In this sense also, let me give you another example. I'm ashamed to mention it, it's so stupid, but you saw four weddings and the funeral. Uh, 
that moment when Hugh Grant declares love. You see, uh, he does it uh, in the sense of, uh, 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 you know, he's stuttering, repeating himself, but precisely through this apparent breakdown of the game, he gets his message through. Sometimes the failed game is the only way to get the message through. That's why, incidentally, I hate male chauvinists who, when a woman reports to be raped, she, they say, but you see, she, she contradicted herself and so on. Sorry, but I would be very distrustful if a woman were to give totally perfect cold report on. Okay. I wouldn't discard it, but you know what I think? Sometimes the truth can only articulate it through uh, failures and so on and so on. So uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the last thing I want to I d uh, emphasize this. I don't believe in going deep into your inner self. Sorry to be brutal. If you go deep into it, you find deep shit there, I claim. <laughs> Monstrous fantasies and so on. I believe that the only way to uh, overcome yourself is to identify with your mask. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.